I'll be in our chat. Question one. What is your job title? Um, I'm an architect, a project manager, architect. The firm I work for, we have um, an architecture studio that just does the buildings. Um, we have a landscape studio that does uh, landscaping around the buildings, parks, um, outdoor seating areas, and then we have a planning department that does uh, master planning for cities and towns or, or communities. I work in the architecture studio and I mostly do uh, apartment complexes, um, townhouses, multi-family projects. We, we don't do too many smaller single family homes currently. Question three. What do you, what are your day-to-day -day tasks at work? Well, um, as a project manager, I have uh, three or four different projects that I'm running all simultaneously. Um, I have, currently I have a project um, that is just beginning construction in Augusta, Georgia. Um, it's an apartment complex. It's uh, six buildings with 220 units. And so I, I have a lot to do with that. It's beginning construction, so there, the contractor sends over what we call uh, shop lines or submittals that are different products that they're going to be using in the product, in the project. And I, I check to make sure that that's acceptable for the project and what we were thinking on. Um, I have a lot of day-to-day -day contact with uh, the clients, um, my bosses internally. Um, so that's with one project and then I have a few projects. And then there's always little tasks to do throughout the day, little things that pop up. Um, I do a lot of um, drafting or modeling as well throughout the day which is um, you know, how we do our drawings to produce drawings. We, we, you know, we have to draw them up still. So yeah. Question four. What kind of education, skills, or training do you need to be an architect? Um, well, uh, the education and training, the education would be a, you need an architectural degree from a university or a college. It's um, like a five-year or six-year degree usually, and so you, that gets you through school. And then once you're done with school, to be a registered architect, you have to take five professional tests that are all about a hundred questions a piece, and you have to pass all five of those. And then you can become a registered architect in that state of Georgia. Question then, five. Sorry, go ahead. Question five. What is most enjoyable about your job? Um, I like the, the, the thing I enjoy most about the job is um, just every day it's something a little different. We, we get to, you know, you get to build different. Every single building is different. Every single room is different. And so we, it, there's always something different to do. It's not the same thing over and over. Uh, it's a fun. It's a fun job. There's uh, there's stuff to do in the office. Uh, you get to um, you get to draw and be creative and, and make designs for buildings and areas. And then you you know so you have that aspect. Then you have the computer aspect, which is a little more rigid. You have to draw it out. Um, we have a lot of projects now. We do renderings which is kind of lifelike images of the, what the project will look like. So we have those to work on. Uh, we have the drawings to work on. We have the, the customers and clients to work with. Uh, so there's a lot of different um, things that we get to do throughout the day. So I really like the fact that it's different. We, we go out to, to the job sites a lot and, and get to walk around and, and inspect the construction and, and see how things are going. So it's just something different every single day. So I really enjoy that. And I like to build buildings and be a part of buildings. Question six. 
What kind of obstacles do you face as an architect? Uh, well, we have, you know, every, every site that you want to build a building has certain codes and it has certain um, limitations to the site. So the client usually has a, a list of things that they want and a th list of things they need. And then we, we kind of use that as a, a direction to help us to design the building. So there's a lot of little obstacles with codes and, and constraints that the client has, constraints of the site. If the site's small or the site's really big, it's how the design can help um, you know, adjust for those different um, instances. Question seven. Are there tools that you... Are there tools that you rely on, rely on to perform your job? Yes, there are tools. So um, before, the, um, the architects of, of 20 years ago, they would draw all their drawings by hand, just with rulers and pencils, and draw everything out by hand. Um, after that, we, we have computers that came along, and at first the computers we still kind of drew everything by hand, but it was with computers. So we, we drew every single line with the computer. Um, so it was a lot easier to get precise lines, a lot easier to print and, and make more documents. Because when they were drawn by hand, you had to, if you wanted a second set, you would have to redraw it or, or copy it. Uh, nowadays with computers, we are mostly modeling our buildings. So we're, we're generating a 3D model of the building. And, and then the program helps us to create the drawings from that 3D model. So it, it's really evolved. The computer would be the biggest tool that we use and with 3D modeling software. It's, it's really changed the industry of architecture and we're able to share that 3D model with, with the client, with the city, with the town to show them what the building's gonna be like and just to, so they can really get a feel for what it is instead of just looking at technical kind of flat drawings. So do you just send them like a digital 3D file or do you actually like 3D print it and show them? Uh, they are, uh, three. it's a 3D, digital 3D model. Gotcha. Um, we, there are the capabilities to do a 3D model on, on some aspects. A lot of times for uh, big major projects, right. Cities and stuff, they'll do a 3D model. Uh, one of our projects, we, we don't do that, but we do have some 3D models here in the office. That's awesome. We've had that on a couple sites. That's awesome. Just depending on the project and the budget, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Always comes down to the dollar. <laughs> yeah. Question eight What kind of technology do you use? So I was kind of touching on that. We use a we, well, we use a lot of, uh, we have a 3D modeling program called Revit, uh, and that's where we build the building um, 3D, kind of a lot like your um, your video games that you guys create. The Minecraft, it's, it's very similar to that, although it's a little more complex. <laughs> um, if only we, it was simple. We use Photoshop, we use um, different um, graphical programs to, to show the the product to the client. Um, we use our, you know, e emails every day, Word and Excel, uh, regular computer program, um, communicating with the city, with the clients. We, we send memos and spreadsheets. So it's a little bit of everything. Obviously, as an architect, we use, um, depending on the phase of the project, when the phase is being designed, we use a lot of trace paper and pencils and pens and, and kind of design the building in sketch form. And then we move to a computer to get it kind of in the computer and start getting the details. Um, then when those are done, it's more of a presentation. We're showing the client, showing the city, uh, what the project's gonna look like. So that's, you know, Photoshop um, and then 
Yeah, and then, you know, like I said, email, Word, Excel, they're, they're kind of standard mm -hmm. um, programs. Question nine. Have the kind of tools and technology that you use changed throughout your career? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Question up. nine. Have the kind of tools and technology that you use changed throughout your career? Um, yeah, I mean a little. So I've, I've only been in the, in the field for you know, a few years now. I've been in the building industry for 10, you know, 10 plus, 15 years. And then just got into the architecture side of, the, of building. Um, I initially started on the construction side used to have my own contractor's license and then I started and then I got onto the more design side and got into architecture firm. Um, when I first started, we were doing um, just CAD 2D is what they call it. So it's just drawing lines on, on computers. And then um, then I started, we started doing the 3D modeling. So even just in my short period, it has, um, it has evolved. Right now, we, we also have a 3D program that we build the the model in, and just recently, over the last couple of years, we've started to import that 3D model into another program that is built specifically just for presentations and renderings. Um, our initial program, which is Revit, is used to build it, and it's it's very detailed. You have um, all of your dimensions and building details and all your different layers that you need, um, and that's how we create our our construction documents. Then we bring it into another program, and that's where we do all our fancy imagery and photo renderings and videos of the project. So it's, yeah, it's, it's constantly evolving. Is it mostly a PC kind of programs, or are you all Mac? Uh, ours are mostly PC. Uh, my previous firm was Mac, so it, it, it just depends on what, uh, what they do. One of the major programs that we use now is which is Revit, and it's kind of an industry standard, and it's only on PC right now. Gotcha. A lot of Mac users use a, a boot camp or a, or a similar program to use Revit on it, but um, we just use PC just to run it natively. Gotcha. Um, I think a lot of our firm would like to go to Mac. <laughs> the wave of the future, yeah. Everybody wants to be Mac. <laughs> yeah, we're, most, we're a PC firm. Awesome. Question 10. What is the coolest project you ever designed? Hmm. The coolest project. Well, right now we're working on a project um, that I helped design. Um, it's called Castleberry Park, and it's right across from uh, the Mercedes, the Falcons Stadium, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta here. Uh, and so we are working on a a mixed-use multifamily project so it has apartment has apartments on the upper levels and then the lower ground levels it has restaurants and retail spaces and then um, on the inside of the project is there is a large six-story parking garage and then on the back side of the project it is um, a hard rock cafe hotel oh, wow. that's being built so that project kind of has three projects wrapped in one. Ooh. And that's kind of been the funnest so far. It's We're currently just breaking ground on it right now. It's right across from the Falcon Stadium. And um, so that one's pretty exciting. We, uh, Jace also told us that you uh, have also designed a school. Could you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so there was um, a friend of ours Works um, was working with uh, the community in uh, Indo in Micronesia, and a lot of the school in there is just a people's homes, and or just r really run down buildings. And a friend of ours was looking to build a very um, you know standard common school. They don't have any building codes, any. Um, no kind of standards there. Um, so it was a very, um, and, and they didn't want anything fancy. They just wanted a cinder block, a big square cinder block building um, with some walls for some classrooms. And um, it was a two-story building. So we, I did that um, 
probably a year ago. Wow. And they've called a few times and asked a few questions, so I know they're building it, but I haven't seen any pictures yet. I keep meaning to, to get a hold of them. Uh, so they were still in the process of um, getting donations to build it and looking for do donations for, for products and for money. And so I was in, I'm, not even, I'm still not even sure if, if it was built or in the process. But I know they've called out a few things, so I, I do think it was. Gotcha. That's cool. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. That was one of my first actual projects. Question so. 11. If I want to become an architect when I am an adult, what school subjects are most important for me to excel in? Um, well, let's see here. That's a good question. I would say that, um, you know, just having that general, uh, you know, rounded education would be a good, definitely a good start. We, we deal with a lot of um, history of the areas, you know, so history is good. There's a decent amount of math involved in um, the field of architecture. We deal a lot with um, physics and loads and, and things like that. So, you know, math, you definitely want math. You'd want uh, good writing skills. There's a lot of communicating with clients and cities and owners and bosses. So you want to be able to communicate well. So you want your, your English skills, and your spelling and grammar to be tip top. Although I'm sure that's with any job. Um, history, um, I took some drafting kind of computer classes when I was in high school, um, which by the time I got to, to college, they're kind of obsolete, but it, it's still something that you could do. Um, most of architecture is very specialized, so once you, once you go to college and start um, getting a degree in it, they're very specialized classes and you know, about building types, building construction, design. There's a lot, there's actually a lot of art in architecture, and it's something that surprised me probably the most when I was in school, is that the first couple of years, I felt more like an art major than an architecture major. So I think, um, you know, you're, you're really tapping into your creative side of your brain that, you know, that sometimes we don't always use. As adults, we don't use it. I think as, as kids, you guys use it more, more than we do. But so, um, I think the art class would be a great, a great class as well to, to excel in to help you as an architecture uh, career if you chose, if anyone chose to go that direction. Question 12. What is your prediction about the future of architecture in the next 50 to 20 years? Hmm. What is my prediction? Well, I, I, I hope it's still around. I think that um, right, right now we, we kind of coordinate with a lot of uh, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, plumbing engineers. And so we have drawings, they have drawings, and we, we share them kind of back and forth all the time. I think that as the future goes on, that we'll probably be all in one one building and maybe even all in one room. So that instead of us doing something and sending it to the structural people and they say, no, 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 you can't do this, you gotta do that. And then we change it and then we send it to the electrical engineer and they say, no, 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 you can't do that, you need to do this. Um, to kind of cut out a lot of that back and forth, I can see us being more of a collaborative type environment where everyone's in the same office, same, possibly even the same room. Um, I can also see that maybe as, you know, architectural drawings have always been on large sheets of paper that the contractor has at the, at the building site. I can see that, you know, 50 years that our whole um, industry will be digital, that they'll be building with, with iPads and tablets and looking at drawings digitally, not necessarily on paper. And that, you know, updates and changes and dimensions can be, can be taken, 
you know, instantaneously instead of um, calling and asking the architect for questions or looking at the papers. I think everyone will have it digitally. And then I think 3D as well. And for the last question, question 13. Is there any advice that you would give to our students so they will help them if they want to become an architect like you one day? Um, yeah, I think I would encourage anyone to, to look into the field of architecture. I think it's a great field. Like I said, I, I like, you know, as a career, you want to find something that you like to do and that you enjoy doing. If you don't enjoy what you do as, a, as work, you'll, you know, you'll dread it every single day. And I think that architecture is a very um, fun and, and job, fun job and something that provides a lot of um, different opportunities and challenges. And it doesn't, it's not mundane and it's not the same thing over and over. So it really encourage people to, to look more into it because it, it's, a, it's a great job. I think that the, um, to be able to have the a little bit of interior environment where you're working on projects and then you get to go to the job sites and see them being built, I think it's, it's a really rewarding um, project. You get to look, work with a lot of, of interesting people. Cool. Thank you for joining us today for this interview. Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate the time that, that you let me have.